And important to know with the ID4, there will be two different batteries available, a 52 kilowatt hour battery and a 77 kilowatt hour battery. And the bigger one that then delivers the car a maximum range of 520 kilometers fully loaded. And when you want to recharge the car, uh, that works easily. Of course, you can use the household socket, which takes ages. You can use a wall box, which goes a, a bit quicker, and you can use the quick charger. And the important thing here is the car offers a maximum charging power of 125 kilowatts um, with a big battery. If you use the smaller one, it's only 100. But nevertheless, that means that you can quickly recharge your big battery when needed, and that gives you about 320 extra kilometers in only 30 minutes. Um, on the other hand, that battery has a weight of about 500 kilograms, uh, which is quite a lot. But when you look here at the whole picture, um, this electric car only features a small engine at the front, and if you have the four-wheel version, a small engine at the rear, but nothing in between. And so you really save some weight, and overall, it's still very agile. The ID4 will be available in five trim levels. In addition to the basic version Pure, there are Max and the current variant first to choose from. The basic price for the ID4 Pure with a small battery, which will be available from 2021, should be less than 37,000 euros. The first version is available from around 49,000 euros and the fully equipped ID4 First Max from around 59,000 euros in Germany. At first glance, a good offer. Knowing that Tesla Model Y is available from about 58,000 euros and the Mercedes EQC from about 69,000 euros, it even sounds better. But a real competitor could be the 4 m 6 long Polestar 2, for which an entry-level version has also been announced at a price below 40,000 euros. And then there is the corporate brother Skoda Enyaq. It is a little larger than the ID4 and will be offered from prices less than 34,000 euros. Talking about the boot of the ID4, we really find SUV sizes because that car features with the rear seats of 543 liters as a maximum, and that sounds a lot, but the Enyaq by the way, offers about 40 liters more. But when you fold down the rear bench, you then find 1,575 liters, which is a really nice number. What I really like with the car is you will not only find a second floor underneath here, you will also find an extra compartment down here, which is really nice to put things in the boot, which will not roll around and which nobody else can see from the outside. Looking at the side of the ID4, you instantly see these big wheels here. And this is because that car is featuring the maximum size 21 inch. Unfortunately, the car comes as standard only with 18 inch alloys. Looking at the whole car, it is 4 meters 58 in length, and that means it's about 7 centimeters shorter than the Skoda Enyaq, but it is 32 longer than the ID3. The funny thing is, the wheelbase is exactly the same as with the ID3, which is 2 meters 76. Um, the car is on top 1 meter 61 in height, which is yeah, very similar to the Skoda. And when you look at these proportions, that really gives you the SUV look. And one thing where you can see that we talk about an SUV are the claddings here at the wheel wheel arches. Um, there's not so much extra ground clearance, but I think wheel arches and the yeah, proportions and shape of the car really tells you this is an electric SUV. Being inside of the ID4, you instantly see, yeah, that's a new and fresh car. And different to the uh, Skoda Enya, which we reviewed a couple of days ago, um, we find a completely different screen here. The screen size is the same, but the position is completely different. It's not integrated into the car. It's really something that looks like it's flying <laughs> inside of the car, so not really connected with it. Um, and on top of this, you do find, of course, a modern steering wheel with all these sensors here. So no knobs and uh, other controls. Everything is sensor that is here. You do find the same here where you can swipe. And as you see, gesture control is working as well. You do find the same with the light control here at the, rear, at the left side. So that is really very modern. And if you're a big fan of knobs and buttons, ah, that's the, definitely the wrong car for you. Um, Looking at the center, you do find a standard, a 10 inch screen, but you can have up to 12 inch. And that for sure is not only a standard system, it's a modern one. So you can configure the home screen the way you want. Um, you can, as you may know from other cars like the new Volkswagen Golf, um, you do find live data, you do find internet connections and all the other stuff you may uh, want to have a look at. Um, and the rest of the car really feels yeah, very fresh, very modern. And, you sit inside of the car because the car really is wrapped around you and gives you a very cozy, very nice feeling. And you do find modern materials, very nice craftsmanship. So I really have to say, I absolutely do like the interior. Um, regarding to the space here at the front seat, I don't know how it looks like, but it's very comfortable, even for a tall person like me with, with nearly two meters height. I really do sit very nicely in the car. How about behind me? We're gonna find out now.
So now I've jumped onto the rear bench and yeah, I think I do pay a bit of the price um, because it was so comfortable at the front, I do find less space in here. But nevertheless, I'm nearly two meters tall and I do sit behind me. And as you can see, there is some space left in front of my knees, not so much, but unfortunately I do not have any space left for my foot uh, because they will not work underneath the front seat. But um, as said, I'm one meter 95 high. I'm quite a tall person and I do sit behind me and that car and I really have to say yes. For a short trip, that's absolutely fine. For a mid trip, that'll be okay. And for a long trip, no, I would not say that is my first wish on the list. But on the other hand, normally I'm allowed to sit in the front row. Talking about the materials and the craftsmanship, I really have to say, yes, it is a Volkswagen, which means you do find very nice materials, very nice craftsmanship. You do find leather, you do find metal, you do find glossy, glossy stuff. Um, so very, very nicely made. And when we talk about the seats, I really do like them a lot because they're not only comfortable, they also offer enough support. And I do like the shape of them as well. And important for all the people who are not a big fan of leather, there will be an alternative uh, coming up, I think, next year as well. Um, talking about compartments, you do find quite a nice compartment in the door, a very nice compartment down here, and two cup holders over here, and of course the glove box. Um, so you do really find enough space to put your stuff in. You do find loads and loads of glossy black stuff in here. It's not only at the uh, dashboard, it's also here at the center console with the sat nav. It's here with this elements here, and you do find it down here at the center console as well, um, as well as on the steering wheel. That really looks very nice, as you know, but as you also know, is this is something where you do find scratches quite easy and where you do find fingerprints all over the car. So you have to have your uh, towel with you to clean it up daily to make it still look good after a couple of days. Also on board is the new voice control system, which gives you the opportunity just to talk to your car. And when you start it by saying hello ID, the car starts, yeah, just let's like say, reading your wishes from your lips.